Hello, 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 hello. The time has come to discuss with you the solution to the freefall problem. Here is a very massive object, like say a planet, and here is an object, little m, with a mass negligibly small compared to capital M. It's at a distance capital R from the center of this planet. We release it at zero speed at this location, and so it will radially free flow towards this planet. And the question now is how long will it take to go from this position, distance capital R from the center, to a distance R0 from the center. The physics is easy. When the object has reached little r, if this distance is little r, then the kinetic energy is the difference in potential energy between this point and that point. So here you see one half mv squared at this location is the difference in potential energy and the little m cancels. So the time to move over the distance dr is of course dr itself divided by the speed. So now, in order to get the total time from here to there, you have to do an integral. Notice that when you move from here to from r to r0, you go into the direction of minus dr. The r is positive in this direction. So t is either the integral of minus dr over vr from r to r0, or, which is the same thing, plus the integral from r0 to r dr over v. I prefer this. So, you take this vr, you put it downstairs. Notice this term here. You take the square root, it's down here. And this term here, you'll find here. So it comes down to calculating this integral. And that is not pea soup. <laughs> no, it is not pea soup. As I mentioned earlier, and that's probably accurate, I don't think I will be able to do this anymore, but in 1979, and I still have those notes, I was able to do it. And two of my graduate students and one of my postdocs did it also at the same time and they found the same result. Algebraically slightly different because that depends on how you massage the algebra, but the net result was that all four we had identical final results. Yeah! I will give you my solution of 1979. So this is at free fall time. This term, this is my shorthand notation of the arc tangent. So this minus sign means arc tangent. And so it is the arc tangent of this angle. One of my graduate students had the arc cosine of R0 divided by capital R, which is exactly the same thing. Trigonometry, you can use that. This arc tangent is the same as the arc cosine of R0 divided by capital R, a square root, by the way. Yeah. So keep in mind, this must be in radians. So now, once you accept this one, and you can, of course, you can use the web, you will find this solution on the web. 
Perhaps this is written slightly differently because you, know, you can write this in 20 different ways. And this, on the web, you may find the R cosine. But the bottom line is that if you use this verbatim, exactly this result, you can go wrong. So, capital M is the mass of the Earth. Our zero was 6,700 kilometers, top of the Earth's atmosphere. We have taken for the Earth radius approximately 6,400 kilometers, just to get a nice number. And the first question now is, what is the free fault time if capital R is 5 Earth radii? That's the answer. I, I thought it was a waste of my time and your time to tell you what this is and what that, sorry, what this is and what that is and what that is and what this is. Obviously, you should be able to use this equation because to find the equation is not easy, but to use it is trivial, of course. So I find 2.66 hours. For those of you who want to find the same result, the angle, in the case of 5 Earth radii, is 62.77 degrees. And so in radians, that is 1.095. So this whole term, in the case of 5 Earth radii, becomes 1.095. Alright, now we use this equation verbatim for 50 Earth radii. Don't look at this yet. The angle I found is 81.68 degrees, which is 1.426 radians. Just for those of you who want to check my calculation. And I found that the infall time from 50 Earth radii is 88.0 hours. Now I want to expand a little bit on the situation here where R is much, much larger than R0. It's about 50 times larger. So if now I go to this equation, this r is to the power 1.5 and this r is only to the power 1 half. So this term for very large values of r will dominate. So you can completely forget this one. This you have to keep and this you have to keep. Now there's something else which is interesting. If r is much, much larger than r0, then this number here, including the square root, is going to be a very large number. And the arctangent of a very large number must be very close to 90 degrees. And that is pi over 2 radians. Therefore, if you take a situation where r is much, much larger than r0, then the freefall time should be very close to this term, you have that here, times r to the power 3 over 2, you have that here, times pi over 2. And the larger r is, in comparison to R0, the closer you will end up to have this freefall time. I advise you to use this equation exactly as it is. And what did you find? <laughs> yeah, you found 88.0 hours, which is also what I found when I use this equation without any approximation.
Suppose I have a circular orbit with radius r. Then all of you should be able to calculate what the orbital period is in that situation that the radius of the circular orbit is capital R. If you have any doubts, you don't remember how to do that, well, watch some of my A01 lectures in the Keplerian lecture, Ke Keplerian orbits, which I think is lecture 22. You will probably see that there also. So this is the orbital period. If we take for R, 50 times the radius of the Earth, you will find 498 hours, 498 hours, almost 500 hours. Now, compare this with that. And keep in mind, this is only valid if R is much, much larger than R0. But when that is the case, or to a high accuracy, it is the case, then the free fall time is the orbital time divided by the square root of 32. You can convince yourself that in less than one minute that this is correct. And the only reason why I mention this square root of 32, because if you Google these free fall times, and I hope that you, many of you have done that, that this square root of 32 is often mentioned. But now comes something very special. If R is much, much larger than R0, you can find the free fall time without any of this. So you don't have to do this terrible integral. You ready? What's my lecture 22, 801, Keplerian orbits? If this is an elliptical orbit, and here is mass capital M, then this is called the major axis. It's a name given to an ellipse. And half of that is called the half major axis. So if the major axis has a length 2a, then half of that is a. And as you will find in lecture 22, the orbital period, which is not so intuitive, only depends on half the major axis. It's called the semi-major axis. Not axis. <laughs> it's the semi major axis. So that's a to the third here. So what earlier in a in a circular orbit there was an R here, now there is an A here. It's not so intuitive. And therefore you may want to watch my lecture 22. So the orbital period only depends on the semi-major axis, A. Now follow me closely. I'm going to make this ellipse narrower and narrower and narrower so that this distance here in the extreme case goes to zero. But I don't change to A. I keep this the same. That means then that the mass M will be all the way here and the little M will be there. Now there are a distance M apart. A distance capital R apart. And so, when this little m 
falls down and then goes around this capital M and comes back here, that would be a complete orbit. So the free fall time is half the time of that orbit. What is the orbital period of this whole process? Well, that is this equation whereby A is the semi-major axis. And the semi-major axis, if this distance is capital R, that semi-major axis is capital R over 2. So this is the orbital period if the trajectory is effectively a straight line, back and forth. Now, half of that time is obviously the free fall time from this location to capital M. And if you take half this time, you'll find this. You will find this. That is the free fall time over a distance capital R in the case that R is way, way larger than R0. Look at this. And look at that. Exactly the same. So you could have found the free fall time in the case of the 50. R is 50 Earth radii. By this clever reasoning, But of course, you would never have been able to find the free fall time then for the case that R is 5 Earth radii. I hope you have learned something about the beauty of free fall time. And these numbers that you find, 2.66 and 88 hours, also give you some real feeling because this is the real Earth the real planet, and there are satellites in orbit, which are five Earth radii from the Earth, and there are some that are now undoubtedly 50 Earth radii. By the way, the Moon is at 60 Earth radii from the Earth. So, if you were unable to solve the integral yourself, you could have looked it up on the web. I found it on the web also, by the way. The web mentions the cosine, not the tangent, arc cosine, which is fine. Okay? This wasn't easy, and if you couldn't do it, don't feel bad. By all means, this was not a high school problem. But if you're a high school student, of course, we will still be friends. Have a nice day and take care.